of town Sharing a dream with anyone She's made it through heaven She's made it through hell It's just another story to tell edition of the Heart of a Villain, the podcast and live stream devoted to the bearded villains, worldwide brotherhood, and the lives of the Hey, you know what they say, right? <laughs> hey, it is great to be back with you again tonight. Still on a Friday night. It seems like I'm kind of meandering back over to Friday nights anymore, it seems like. Uh, but I appreciate everybody just kind of floating with me there, just trying to see where the show's going to end up on a Thursday night or a Friday night or where it's going to be. I appreciate you guys so much for listening on a regular podcast platform, or if you are here live tonight, I would love for you to be in here in the comments section, chatting with us, carrying on some conversation about all the goodness that you're going to be listening to and and uh, things that you might have come across, some interesting stories and whatnot that you may have come across in the online chats or any kind of BV-related threads or chats. I'd love to hear about them. But hey, tonight... It is, well, today it is March 15th, and this is episode 207 of The Heart of a Villain. It is the Ides of March. Beware the Ides of March, right? <laughs> That's what they say. But uh, that goes back only a couple of years, right? But hey, um, tonight, guys, we are going to be celebrating the second anniversary with the boys from Chattanooga. So I have an interview upcoming with Buddy and Puzzle talking about their upcoming event that is next weekend. And uh, it sounds like it's going to be really cool and unique. Another one of these unique events that's different from the others. 
and uh, so it'll, it'll be fun for sure to, to hear from them. We've got some chapter news. We've got some. We've got a chapter that did a very cool thing. We're going to be talking about in just a minute uh, today, uh, celebrating Pi Day. Uh, actually, yesterday, but three point one four. You know what that's all about. Um, <laughs> so they celebrated Pi Day in a very cool way. So we're going to be celebrating with those guys, talking about them, giving them a shout out as well. We've got a few new merch items to go over uh, to share with all the goodness and talk about charity endeavors with these uh, with various guys and the chapters and, and all the good stuff. We've got a we got kind of a packed packed show. Plus, I want to revisit our topic that we went, went over last week when we we're talking about, you know, how if we've noticed if everybody seems to have noticed that attendance, the numbers, the number of people seems to be down in the last year, year and a half at all, just kind of universally at all of the BV events uh, and gatherings that we're at. And so I just, as as we talked about, if you remember last week, we dove into it a little bit, trying to figure out a little bit and, and, carry, and just kind of breach a conversation about that, asking the question, is it is it financial? Is it any one of, of a variety of other factors, or is it just a combination of them? And I got some interesting responses that I kind of figured I would get uh, from in some some direct messages that I got sent to me uh, in the last several days, and uh, it all makes sense. It really does. But I'm I'm interested in uh, not only learning what people's reasonings are for that, but also to see what we can do to improve that. And if that's a matter of making it, making things a little bit more interesting, if it's a matter of uh, just trying to work on the mindset and uh, making brothers understand what it is and how beneficial it is to being there, not only for the chapter that's hosting, but for themselves. And what a, you know, what a huge boost it can be just to go to these events, especially the ones that have never been to them before. Uh, the, the way that they can lift you up and lift your spirit up, uh, it's, you just you can't really you can't quantify it, you can't explain it away if, to people that have never done it, never been there. So We'll talk a little bit more about that in the in in just a little bit. But I am so happy that everybody is here. If you are here live with us, I want to give you a shout out here in the comments section and uh, see where everybody here is at. If you are here live with us and you want to give it, you want to say hey, uh, and you haven't already, get in the comment section here and give us a shout out. And uh, love love to have you on here, Wayne, Mister One Feather, chiming in. Hope everybody's doing great. Yes, we are. And Wayne has some very, very cool news, and uh, I have to share it because he shared it here publicly uh, in the chat, but uh, today he just found out that he is cancer-free. That is awesome. We celebrate you. We celebrate the news. That is awesome, Wayne. Great to hear. Great to hear. Rabba on the road says, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. <laughs> Last week sure stirred it up. Yeah, I thought so. I thought so. It was great, though. Great conversation. I love to see. Mr. Puzzle Man is here with us, too. I love it when the guys do this and they come and hang out with us while they're at work. And uh, hey, what their bosses don't what their bosses don't know, don't hurt them, right? <laughs> we have several people that tune in here while they're at work, and I love seeing that. Gary's hanging out with us as well. Hey, bros. What's up? Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, who else we got chiming in, in our in our comment section here? Buddy is also with us. And uh, I know how I know how much Buddy and Puzzle love <laughs> love looking at themselves on video uh, for the interviews. They've all they're they're old pros at me dragging them in through interviews now after four years of doing this. <laughs> so I'm sure they they absolutely love it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Let's let me do another uh, quick scan here. Dave, Mr. Ramsey's here with us, hanging out as well. How you doing? Good to see you. Good evening. Bearded Bam Bam is hanging out with us as well. Good evening. Good evening. Good to see you. Lurch is also here hanging out with us. Good to see you. And oh, Corey's in here as well. Look at this. I love it. Good to see you. Love all the brothers hanging out with us on a Friday night. You guys could be doing 10 times other things. <laughs> but uh, well, of course, Bam Bam says night shift life. So he must be working also. But hey, if this is hey, if this is the worst, you know, that things go and you get to hang out with us on a on a Friday night while you're working, that's an awesome thing, right? That's an awesome thing. Well, uh, let's see. What do we want to do first? Well, I think the first thing we're going to do is let's just 
let's just kick right into some of the chapter merch that we have. Uh, there's just a handful of things that we've got merch related, trying to raise money for charity stuff. Uh, no pomp and circumstance, no no music or anything like that. Um, but I just want to uh, get in here and uh, and talk about some merch. Hey, we got I got to bring this this comment in here too. I am Buddy's grandson, just playing my game while listening to the stream. I love it. David T. Griffith, good to see you here. Love that you wanted to chime in and comment for us. Uh, <laughs> family is family. I love it. Buddy, say hi to him for us. Uh, I'm sure he's listening anyway, so hanging out with us as well. All right, so let's get into some chapter merch for this here week. We don't have any, like I said, no fancy music this week, but we got to give it into it. We talked about this for the first time last week, and I think they're still out there. So I want to give a shout out, at least while I think that they're still out there. And if they're not, then you can hit them up and maybe they can reorder or otherwise, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just keep an eye on the better eye on the on the calendar, see if they're not around anymore. But BV Pikes Peak, uh, their proceeds going to the National Kidney Foundation. I love this patch. I love the way that it turned out. I love the detail. I love the bold colors. These purple and green together is always a really cool combination. Uh, $12 for the, this patch with the uh, proceeds going to the National Kidney Foundation. Very cool to see. Also, we have the ENC boys. Um, BVENC down in Carolina, North Carolina, East North Carolina. They have a ENC t-shirt come out. And uh, those of you who have lived through the 80s and 90s, you probably recognize the logo on this as their version of it. I don't want to give the original credence to anything, but <laughs> this is the ENC. Um, love it, love it. Very cool rendition of this shirt. You can get this shirt at encvillains.bigcartel.com, ranging in price from $20 to $21. I don't have any information on pricing, but uh, or as far as sizing, I'm sorry. Pricing is obviously there. It's $20, 20 to $21. But the old ENC, and then the back of the shirt says Brotherhood Above All. Love it. All right, gra grab that ENC for life shirt if you can help those brothers out. Also, I got this just a little bit ago. I was uh, I was able to get it squeezed in here into the frame. Uh, our brother here, our our newly cancer free brother here, uh, Wayne One Feather wanted me to share this. There, his his Eagle Squad. If some of you are familiar with his Eagle Squad, they're doing a patch raising money for autism, and um, it's very very bright, bold, very cool. Um, their Eagle Squad autism patch. And uh, you can get this by, I would just say, he sent me a link for a, a cash app, but sometimes those are hard to mention on here and then you try and find it. So what I want to instead do is just say, just send you over to his Instagram page. Um, it's much easier for everybody to find, especially if you're already friends with him. Instagram, just go to at, at onefeather123, at onefeather123, grab one of these uh, Eagle Squad patches. I believe they're 10 bucks, 10 or $12. I think he said 10. Uh, but don't quote me on that until you get there because uh, we've got several patches that we're doing the, the different times that are 10 or $12. So I didn't get a chance to put that on the screen, but uh, hit up Wayne one feather one, two, three on Instagram and grab one of these autism patches. Very, very cool. And then also I saw this come across the interwebs of Instagram, the bearded villains, Georgia, they are raising money for a brother in need and all the proceeds will go to this brother. Uh, they're doing a pre-sale for the patch and you got to get on this one quick because the proceed the, the pre-sale ends on the 18th. So we only have two more days to get this uh, to get one of these on the on the uh, this pre-sale. So uh, Bearded Villains Georgia, they are raising they have a brother in need. Uh, he has uh, brain cancer treatments. So not not a pretty thing um, and he's in uh, some some financial strain uh, obviously because of all this. So they've come out with this Kick Rocks Cancer patch. Um, and you know what? Me being a old school copper, uh, of course, anything that is blue, black, and gray, I love. I love. So, uh, Kick Rocks Cancer Patch BVGA. Get over to the Bearded Villains Georgia Instagram page. They've got they've got all the information on there. I think these are twelve dollars, and they have a set. They have something set up. If you buy more than one, it's a a different package. So, uh, if I read the thing correctly, so Bearded Villains Georgia. On Instagram, get over there and grab one of these patches to help a brother out. The pre-sale ends 318. So just two more days, and that's it. All right. That's what I've got for merch right now. If for some reason I missed you, 
I am really sorry, uh, but uh, make sure you send me a message and shout out reminders and all the good stuff, and I'll make sure I get you next week up, and uh, we'll take it from there. I'd like to take a second and say cheers to everybody that's uh, taking a drink of adult beverages tonight. Um, I know those of you working can't, but cheers to everybody. I still have not found a uh, bourbon or whiskey sponsor for this program, which I'd love to do. So anybody out there listening, find me one. <laughs> Help find me a bourbon or whiskey sponsor. Uh, that would be really cool. <laughs> this segment brought to you by, yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. You know what? Maybe I'll just start, <laughs> I'll just start assigning uh, various companies that I like segments in the in the podcast and they'll they'll be sponsors without even knowing it. Right. (laughs) I won't get anything out of it and I'm just giving them free advertising. We'll see. (laughs) I don't know if that's legal. (laughs) I don't, I'm sure it's probably not. There's probably some loophole that I could get in trouble for doing that. I don't know, but um, (laughs) just giving shout outs to my favorite companies out there. We'll see. Maybe I need to do that. Uh, Okay. So uh, let's, I want to get into, we only have, I only have two things really to talk about in the, Villains Around the World segment this week, because if you remember, for a couple of weeks, we had just like oodles and oodles of stuff. We had five, six, seven chapters doing things that I could report on. And then like anything else, we're going to have these lulls where we only have one or two things. And and really, I had to search for the the big one for this week when I'm talking about the Bearded Villains PA South, um, when I'm talking about that, because uh, that just happened. And I just happened to come across it a little earlier today. So I was excited to be able to reach out to them, and they responded back very quickly themselves uh, to alert me and let me know what this thing was about. So uh, very, very cool. So we'll be able to share that in the Villains Around the World segment. So, hey, what do you say we just, you know, get right into it? This is Villains Around the World. Again, this segment, as you know, is when we give shout outs to the chapters of Bearded Villains Around the World doing some cool stuff. And the first one up, some of you, this may be old news, but uh, it just came out this past week. And I always like it when I can find stuff that's like right away, right before the podcast. So I can kind of feel like I'm being one of the first to announce these things. But that's not the case this week because they... They threw this out in the middle of the week or sometime since the last show, I think. Um, and so I, I'm not going to be able to be an early early riser on this one. But I got to give a big shout out to Smoky Mountain Villains, the Smoky Mountain Villains, a new logo. You know how I love to share these when these when the chapters take the time to design a new logo and do some new release. And I know they have some things coming down the pike, but I had to give a big shout out. Smoky Mountain Villains on a very cool new rendition of a new logo for them. And, uh, I love it. I love the, I love the, I love the artwork. I love the shape, a unique shape. I know that they were specifically probably, they had to have been, uh, looking for something different and unique in the shape of it. So very cool logo. Love it. Congrats. Smoky mountain villains on this next up. Got to give a shout out. This is the one I found out about just a little bit ago today. Bearded villains, PA South. The Bearded Villains PA South chapter had a pie day extravaganza. A pie day extravaganza. As you know, that's 3.14. Da, 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 da. <laughs> dot, 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 right? <laughs> this fun event, which is sure to catch on and grow in years to come, consisted of the B- BVPA South bros smashing pies into each other's faces for charity. How cool is that? Really? I mean, just fun. Just fun. It you know, sometimes the sometimes the the best ideas are the simplest ideas and they always work. So awesome to see. Just by smashing a few pies into each other, they were able to raise five hundred dollars for the Bo Bodana. I think I'm pronouncing that right. The Bodana Group. It's a 501c3 nonprofit organization that advocates for the use of tabletop gaming as directed therapeutic and clinical practice. Very, very cool. What a cool organization to find and have a connection with as well. So I know that they 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 wanted something different. They wanted something that would be a really cool tie-in that was unique, and they found it with this Bodana group. Uh, again, this place works by using tabletop games 
uh, directing them as a therapeutic device for people. And I think that's a really cool thing. So in a very short time, they were able to just, in a very simple process, raise $500 for this organization. And this is one of those things I said, this is this is sure to grow uh, in years to come. So can't wait to see how it grows and how this simple idea, and I, yet it's not, it's not, you know, new to just them. That's there's others out there that have done this, but it doesn't matter. It's a really cool rendition of way they're doing it, having fun with it, and an easy way to make some money for charity. So kudos to you guys, BVPA South, on a great idea. And um, yeah, that's our villains around the world segment for this week. If you have something going on, if you have something that you're coming up with, if you've just done something, something for charity, something to help others, doesn't mean if it doesn't have to have raised money, if you're just getting out and doing something, I'd love to hear about it. And that's Villains Around the World for this week. Okay, well... As I told you earlier, we wanted to talk with Buddy and we wanted to talk with Puzzle about their two-year anniversary event they've got coming up in Chattanooga. (laughs) Yes. And I'm excited because this is the first year that I get to go down to them. And I'm excited about that because I haven't had a chance to do that yet. And I felt really bad about it. I couldn't make it last year. And if you know anything about Buddy, if you know anything about Puzzle, you know that they travel their hind ends off. They travel their asses off everywhere. And they've been up to see us here in northern Indiana many times. And so, I, you know, it's it's one of those things, right? You've got to do it. you got to do it. So I hope if you are anywhere near within a couple hours away, three, four, five hours away even, make it a day trip. Come down next weekend, 22nd, 23rd to Chattanooga or up if you're down south, wherever you're at. But anyway, come to Chattanooga next weekend, the 22nd, 23rd. Hang out with us all. We're going to have a great time raising money for charity. And we're going to listen to a we're going to listen to an interview I did earlier today with Buddy and Puzzle. Now, I need to preface this with this one thing. They wanted to make it very very clear how proud they are of all the work and effort that their chapter bros have been a part of and have have been working so hard with. And this is something that came out. It, unfortunately, I didn't ask them that. I didn't get that part on tape. But it's something that before and after the interview, uh, once I hit once before I hit record and after I hit record, it was, you know, we're so proud of our guys. We're so proud of this chapter and all the work they put in. So awesome to hear and uh, great leadership, just just great professionalism and great brotherhood. So I want you to enjoy this video, my interview with Buddy and Puzzle. If I can get it to play. Let's do it this way. Okay, boys and girls, next weekend. When I say next weekend, I'm talking about the 22nd and 23rd of March. All the way down in Chattanooga, we have a really special and fun event that uh, they're looking for us to all dress up for if we're going to go to. So we're going to talk with Buddy and Puzzle about a little two-year anniversary event down in Chattanooga on the 22nd, 23rd. Please help me welcome Puzzle. And Mr. Buddy to the program. How you guys doing? What's up? Good. Good. <laughs> I always got to so, give you the special intro. All right. We like special. I mean, I'm special. Ed. Wow. And, special we know, Ed. And, and we know Ed's special, right? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, special Ed. <laughs> he's going to love that shirt. Oh, I know. I know he's already, know he's already seen it, but he's going to love the fact that you're on here with it. That's even better. Um, <laughs> so good. But hey, I know we're going to talk a little bit about this weekend, uh, the weekend that you guys have planned and what you guys uh, plan to do with it and everything like that. But let's just first start. Let's just kind of go back a little bit. Uh, What has this last year and now you're rolling into year two um, and you guys can pick who you want to talk first since you're on the same camera. But uh, what, what has it been like the last especially the last year and how excited are we now coming into our second year with uh, Chattanooga? Go forward. Okay. So, so for us, it's been it's been a little challenging, not to not to lie, because uh, it's a new chapter. You know, you you've been there. You know what it is, and it's a new chapter in a new era. So it's been a little um, 
I guess easy in some parts and, and difficult on others. Uh, easy because we've been around and seen um, chapters form and, and form bonds and brother and you know brothers from everywhere. But it's also been challenging because it's yours, you know, and you want to baby it as much as you can. If that makes sense. But um, other than that, man, it's been great. It's been great just uh, hanging out with the people you already hang out with. And it gets like a little closer as time goes by. But for me, that's that's been pretty much it in the last two years. Well, we've got a lot of good men in this chapter, and it it's starting to grow. So, I mean, I think we're headed in a good, good, solid direction. I mean, yeah, it's. I I love I love when we see growth and new chapters you know split off from other chapters and especially when you see guys that are active and really i mean they're they're really focused on not only the brotherhood but uh creating creating a brotherhood in their own regard in their in their own area like you guys have always been about and so hearing that you know when when chattanooga became its own thing uh, now two years ago, I, I was I was really excited to see the two of you guys be some of the the kind of the care holders uh, of that, and now uh, in your leadership positions, it's it's fun, man. It's fun, and um, we we talk here on the podcast about you know we need to support people and we need to uh, support you know support those who support you, and uh, on top of that, but you need to travel. You need to get out of your own area. You need to you know, do that stuff. Yeah. You guys, you guys have always, as long as I've known you, um, done that. And it's not just for not, not just, you know, coming up here to Northern Indiana, but everywhere. It seems like just about every event I go to one or both of you is there. And it's, I love that because it's kind of ironic that last week's podcast, we were focused on the topic of why people, you know, fewer and fewer people, it seems like are, are traveling nowadays. Um, but I love the fact that you guys are the the omission to that. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. So we try to support as best we can. I mean, you support us, we're going to support you back. You know, I, and I think that's one thing that we share with your chapter that we always do that. It, it, and it's funny because like somebody will come over from a, like a different chapter that hasn't been a check of new yet, and we're like, damn it, we got to add another meet for the year. But but I mean, it, it's a it's a fun down, you know, because. We want to engage with that person in that chapter, you know? Yeah, it's funny because I've, as as I say this, you know, I always say support those who support you is really important to do. But at the same time, we have to be realistic about some things and that that there's only so many weekends in a year if you if you work full time, especially if you work a job that the schedule is constantly changing or something like that. And now I feel that more than ever because just this last year for the first time in the last three months now, I started going back to work again and uh, it's the first time I've actually had a full-time job the entire time I've been a villain. And so yeah. I've, I've had that freedom to just go, but now recognizing that, okay, now you really have to plan out the year and you have to kind of, you almost do, you have to kind of piecemeal things and realize as much as I would love to go this year to this thing. And I know that they came to our thing. Maybe, maybe we pick and choose and say, we need representation here, but we won't all be able to go, but we need somebody to go. We need a few people right. to go. And I, I think that's the really cool part about of the brotherhood and the people that, that want to travel is that you can always send, you know, there can always be one or two guys from a chapter that can go and represent rather than if you can't send five, 10, but then maybe those guys that went to this event, you know, next month when the, uh, this other event pops up, another couple of guys are going. And so you can work it out that way and, that's really refreshing. Yeah, and he, and here's a just to re reiterate on that. Um, I'm really big on that as well because, like, the way I look at it is like as a chapter, we represent each other to the fullest. So I encourage, and and I know I can speak for both of us, um, our guys to go ahead and do these things because, again, you coming to see me, and if for whatever reason we can make it to yours. I'd like one of my brothers to go and represent us uh, in, in our name. Um, 
And I mean, even with full-time jobs, I'm a little psycho when it comes to that. Like, for example, for last year's Worlds, I uh, got off of work, drove to Chicago, hung out in Chicago, drove down from Chicago and went to work right out from coming down from Chicago. So it's just one of those things, man. Buddy and I, and, and, and most of the guys in our chapter, we're all travelers, man. I think uh, even the new guy just got his first taste of uh, meat, and he's like, dude, when's the next one? You know? We promote that a lot. You know, we, we want you know them to also see what's out there and the experience of brotherhood as a whole. It's just not this. This is what you have here every every day, you know. But there's this, and they they love it, man. They love it. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's it's just awesome to see. And yeah, you've done some crazy travels. Um, <laughs> you put yourself in some big time crunches I've seen in the past. <laughs> where oh yeah, you're like, I'm not even sure I'm going to make it back to where I need to make it back in time, but I'm still going to try to do it. And uh, of course. It's, I know it works. It's fun, but it's, uh, sometimes I just shake my head and just, uh, you know, I hear, I hear your schedule and I'm just like, no, no. Yeah, I mean, it's not for everybody, but that's just the thing that's, you know, with, with my autism, you know, like that, those things like drive me, you know, like I have to have, uh, little chaos in my life to make it, I guess, then, you know? So those things are challenges that I put in myself. And at the end of the day, man, getting there, even as for an hour, I've done that. I've gone to like to a to a anniversary and just had like the last end of it. But just those, you know, thirty minutes, an hour, whatever it is, man, it just makes it all work for Yeah. And I think you guys are positioned in a unique spot, I think, in the country. Because yep. where you guys are located, you can just about turn your head in just about any direction and find a chapter and find a chapter within a few hours to go to. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I am, I'm jealous of that because for us up here, we only have a couple and you know, it's, it's just like, you know, we, and, and anything past that where we have to go four five, six hours, uh, right. at least, at least to get anywhere. So it's nice that you guys are in a very unique situation, much like some of the chapters over in England do, where they're instead of states, it's countries they're going to, but they're only three, four hours away sometimes. And uh, yeah. at, most, at most, but you guys, there's a few that you can even attend that's just a couple hours away and vice oh, versa. Yeah. And that's, that's a really nice, nice feeling to be in. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's four of them. Right. At least, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I know you guys do your part for that uh, to travel for those too. That's great. Uh, cause I, I think we need more of that. Um, I, I, it's, that's, that's part of the, the push of my, the podcast theme from last week. And I'm going to carry it over yeah. for this week a little bit is we have mm -hmm. these chapters that are one, two, three hours away from each other that you just, they don't, it, it doesn't happen. Um, you just don't see the traveling like you did. I know when yeah. I first came in and it's, that's too bad, but let's, we'll, we'll get, we'll get past all that. I want to get into the fun of this weekend. Uh, not this weekend, but obviously for next weekend, the 22nd, 23rd. Um, I did not know that I was going to be able to come to your event this year and things just worked out and I love it when that happens. So I'm, I'm excited to be able to, cause I was not able to come to last year's event because I had a family thing pop off, but man, I'm excited. I'm excited. So tell us a little bit about this weekend where it starts uh, Friday night, I'm assuming uh, Friday, and then where, where, what, what the whole details and plans are? Well, Friday night we'll be downtown uh, at a place called Goodfellas. It's a pizzeria upstairs. Downstairs they have a speakeasy. Uh, it's got some mob history behind it. Al Capone used to have liquor in the building, so. That sort of ties in with the overall theme for the weekend, which is a Dapper's Billings Night Out. Uh, I know myself, I got a 40 style double breasted suit with pinstripes, so it's mafia looking type stuff. But yeah, that's what we're going to do. Uh, Saturday night, we'll be at the uh, National Guard Armory downtown. 
It's a huge building, fence stand. Uh, we've got food trucks, two different food trucks, maybe a dessert truck. Uh, and it is a BYOB event. Which is rare. Well, having it at the Omri, we 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 couldn't hire bartenders because of their regulations. No. We couldn't sell any alcohol, but we could bring our own. So it'll actually be cheaper for people because instead of paying ten dollars a drink, you're getting it for half of that. <laughs> and then some, man, because you can you can pool up with other people and bring your own side. I, I, I didn't, I wasn't saying it like it was a bad thing. I, I think it's a rarity no, no. because you just don't see it very often. And I love the fact that right. it gives you options. And if you just, if you don't want to drink, you just bring whatever you want to drink for the night. Yep. Um, and right. you're, you're good to go. That's right. Yeah. So what is, what is the, I know you said it's a, a villain's dapper night out. Explain to us how you came to that and what what the goal is of the night? What's the uh, what's the premise? Is it just everybody just if they want to dress up and just hang out, um, or is there more to the night? What what are we doing? Well, there's the beard top. Uh, we've added a couple of categories. Uh, we're having a uh, dapper category and a silver fox category. Uh, the ideal came. Just because, and honestly, my wife's always hassling me about, I need to clean up and let's go somewhere. <laughs> so I figured I'd combine that with this and see how it went. And I mean, the chapter loved the ideal. The guys thought it was a good ideal. So we went for it. And it's no nobody's saying you have to dress. We're just saying, the opportunities there, if you want to go styling and profiling for the weekend, if you want to come in blue jeans and a t-shirt, that works just as well. All right. I'm good with that. I'm good with that. I have forgotten all about the fact that you were, you're doing the, until we were just talking right before the interview started about this uh, Dapper Night Out thing. So I'm going to have to start searching around and seeing what I can come up with. But uh, usually my, my only issue is usually, for a whole night, it's been a long time since I've thrown on the full two or three, four pieces of, of clothing together. Cause then I get sweaty and, Bro, it, and me, I end up saying uncomfortable with it. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter what somebody's wearing, but usually by the end of the night, um, there's a few buttons undone. So you won't be left alone. Okay. You know how much fun buddy's having? When the top two buttons start to come down, okay, <laughs> that means he's having a great time. Oh, I get. But that. yeah, to re reiterate on what he was saying about the dapper thing, like, but he's been talking about this for years now. You know, he's been wanting to do something like this for years, and uh, we see, like, for example, our, our brothers over the pond that always have like these flag shoots and you know, just dressed up and just it, it looks super cool, the pinky blinders thing. You know, I, I, we love it, but we just never do anything about it. And but he's like, what do you think if we go ahead and do this that night? And I'm, I'm like, of course. I mean, it's not like I'd like to dress up or anything, but um, <clears throat> yeah, it gives me an excuse to go in the closet and you know take some stuff out. Yeah, you're never one to dress up at these events. <laughs> <laughs> the hardest part you'll have is trying to decide which outfit to wear. Hey, there you go. That's true. That's true. That's facts. Yeah, so I don't want to hear about. It. I know you're already used to doing it for for dressing up like that, but yeah, it's uh for for some of us, it's a it's a struggle to just uh, 15 minutes into the event still be wearing what you came in with. Yeah, man, it is. Yeah, it is. I don't and even. It, like it's it. also it's cool. Like you know, the guys were like super excited, and there's this a local store downtown, and it, it was it was really uh, interesting, I guess, for lack of better words, to have like the guys talk like 12 year old girls in the chat like oh i got this color and this you know double uh, breasted and black and i'm like what happened what did buddy create just now you know but it was really cool because you know everybody engaged and everybody went and 
And um, if, if you're going to dress up, I tell you, you're going to have to dress up to win that dapper category because my boys are bringing Oh, I'm sure. telling you, they're bringing it. I can only imagine for sure. I'm not sure there's uh I'm not sure there's enough clothing material to find for to find a full dapper costume for me this year. Uh, but we'll the, <laughs> the place downtown that that a lot of us got suits at. Uh it actually ended up making a donation to us uh for the event. So that was even cooler. Wow, that's awesome. It's very cool. We'll talk talk for a second. What are we? Um, what, what's the plan for the as far as the weekend goes? Raising money for uh, anything specific? And it's for the East Ridge New Child Fund. Uh, that's a local organization in East Ridge that supplies kids with toys at Christmas, clothes, food, food uh, school supplies. Basically, whatever a kid needs, they try to help with it. Uh, it's a really good organization. We tie, we've been tied in with them for four years now. Uh, we volunteer for the, they do a big light show in East Ridge around Christmas time. And we go up and collect money, help them collect money for 30 some odd days. Right, so it's a good organization. Wow. Hey. So that's who we're, that's who we're the the events for. Uh, we've been tied for them for that amount of times, but you've been tied up with them for a longer time. Yeah, I was I was there when they first started that. That was my uh, first five hundred one charity that I helped start, and I sat on the board there for three years. Wow. I actually left there to come to Bridget Buildings. Wow. All right. Well, you, hey, anytime you're anytime you're helping kids, man. I mean, that's that's all you gotta say right there. For right. sure. For sure. But well, I'm hoping that we can we can uh come up with some some good stuff for you and get some good get some good donations and you know, make it just a fun, memorable thing that hopefully it it becomes a little I mean, I think the the villains dapper night out idea could you know it could uh have some wings to it and it'd be something that really you know moves on and maybe that could be the the niche that you guys have down at chattanooga uh, moving forward thank you i'm hoping it would be neat it would be neat and and unique yeah. too and unique too so um it's always nice when you can find some sort of a thing to do and that make it different right. from everybody else uh in what you do and you know it's it's, it sounds like it'd be fun. Uh, oh, yeah. if, I, if I weighed 180 pounds, I'd be easily to find one of those things and slip, slip into something quickly and be able to be like, no problem. So who knows what you're going to see old BP in next exactly. weekend. <laughs> Dude, you, you blow my mind every time I've gone to see you at your event. So stop it. Well, that's not saying much. Uh, it's uh, I may just have a white I may just have a white T-shirt that says Dapper on it. For me, that's been doing this for a long time and been to a many meets. That's a lot to say. I'm nobody, but I'm saying comparing to others, man, yeah. you make it hard to top. Nah, well, I ain't nobody. I ain't nobody. But uh, all right, so Friday night meet and greet. Uh, is this? Uh, do we have to? Is there a secret passcode or anything like that for the speakeasy? Get into it? No, you just go through the front doors at the pizza, and you'll see the steps that lead downstairs. Okay. Uh, they have alcohol uh, and pizza upstairs. Nobody under the age of twenty-one downstairs, though. Sure. So uh, no children. Saturday night we have a our MC is a local DJ in Chattanooga from Rock 105. His name's Greg Ramlin. Uh, pretty good old boy. Uh, we've got a DJ, and I'm gonna let Puzzle touch on the raffle items. Oh, that was my next question. Yeah, let's talk. You know what's funny? Um, I, I I have a list 
and I wanted to kind of talk about them, but I like the prices a little more. Let's just put it this way. There's a lot of very, very good items in there. Uh, and they all vary from, from patches to uh, cigars and uh, other things. So up to the time that we got together, I decided to not get in the end, but just just know that it's going to be really, really good. Well, let's give them something. I did. I'll just tell them about R2D2. I saw, oh, I, oh, saw, oh, I, saw oh. I saw the picture. Yeah, because that's not that's been made public. R2D2 has been made public in the chat. Oh, that was so cool. It is I very cool. I'm not a, I'm not a Star Wars fan or anything, but that's really cool. Yeah. I'm yeah. a Star Wars geek, and, and you know the fact that it's got that whole package and it comes with the with the robot um R two D two of course it, staple of Star Wars. I I love it. Yeah, that's going to bring in some money, I'm sure. For sure. And, you know, again, it's all for charity, and oh yeah, it, it's for, it's a charity that's really dear and close to us. Like I mean, they love us to death, man. They'll do whatever. Uh, it's like a two way street, like. That we do for them and they would do whatever they can for us and again it's for kids yeah and we we've also got a one only it'll be the only one that's out of chapter hoodie yeah oh it's we we've got one it's an extra large and it's the only one that'll be out of chapter so all right that ought to be a pretty good, pretty good go there. That would fit my leg. Okay, good. <laughs> well, if you win, I might be able to trade you. You can't, tra you can't trade me for what you don't have. Listen, I know people, bro. I All can right. make one good size. All right, and keep that one, if you know what I mean. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. All right, guys. Well, is there anything oh. else before I let you go? Yeah, is there anything else that we can talk about? But he was talking about no kids allowed at the uh, at the pizzeria place, and I forgot about Riley. Um, is he of age? <laughs> Riley? Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. Because he said child, and I was thinking Riley. So I'm sorry. <laughs> Love him. I'll make sure he hears that. All thank right. you. Thank you. Thank hey, you, guys. Thanks so much for jumping on uh, for me tonight. It's uh, I'm excited about it. I think it's really cool that we're doing something different. And uh, now now I have homework over the next week to try and find something to wear. Um, oh, I so, love it, man. I love it. I'd love to rub your feathers. You know that. I know. That's, I know. Buddy I and I, I kind of sit I down have, and say these things. I have several hats uh, that could work, but I don't, uh, I'll have to figure out what I can do. So Yeah, I got, I got several hats too. You like my hat? Yeah, I love that hat. Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks for the promo. All right, guys. Hey, I will let you guys go. Thanks so much. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in just a week, uh, a week and a couple of hours, probably. Uh, yes, sir. All right. We'll see you then. All right. Take care until then. And then uh, we'll see you then. All right. Thank you. All right. See you guys. Don't forget, be more Ed. Be more Ed. That's right. All right. Bye. See you guys. Have a good one, bud. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Always. You never know. It's like, when, especially when you get two guys, two of those, I mean, those two guys in the same room at the same time, uh, you just don't know what you're going to get into. <laughs> you really don't. Um, so I love talking to those guys though. I can't wait to go hang out with them again next weekend and, uh, man, everybody else. And I know there's going to be a couple people down there that I have not met in person before. So I'm looking forward to that too. Um, yeah, it's just going to be a, it's just going to be an awesome time. Hey, while I'm here, um, I got to do, I got to share if I can figure out how we're going to do this here. I'll come back to this screen here. I got to show this because while they were talking about it, I forgot that I didn't have a picture of it up yet. So while I did some quick editing here and re, re, uh, reconfiguring of things, excuse me, while we were finishing up that interview and I'm going to try to bring this in here. Look at this. Let me just cover my face up with this thing. Um, so we we're talking about Star Wars and the R two D two thing that they we didn't really mention a whole lot about what it was when they mentioned it for this raffle. <laughs> this thing, it's an R two D two. It's the Star Wars popcorn popper, the deluxe popcorn maker. 
Um, old school, old school. So this is not microwave. This is an actual popper of popcorn. And <laughs> this thing is so cool. I've, I remember seeing this the first time several, I mean, it's from a store several months ago. I was like, yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. But I, I wasn't too sure I wanted to pull the, pull the trigger on it. But to pull the trigger on it now, and also you get this cool thing, but you're also helping charity. Oh, I don't know. I don't know, boys. Uh, you might want to come rolling in deep with the pockets because uh, BP's got some got some Star Wars love, and uh, I have a lot of Star Wars memorabilia hanging around. So that popcorn papa would be the extra nice in my kitchen. So I'm just saying, just saying, just saying. Maybe, maybe, just maybe. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Well, thanks again uh, to Puzzle and to Buddy. Uh, for that awesome interview, taking the time, I you know what I mean the whole the whole weekend sounds fun. I, and, yeah, I had forgotten about. Oh, I got to dress up for this thing. Uh, I did I did figure out I have a loophole in this, and um, so I have a I think I have an outfit already that I could wear. Um, we'll see, we'll see if I can make it work. But um, can't wait, can't wait. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. It'll be a lot of fun, and um, yeah. So congratulations, two years, Chattanooga, going to be awesome. I love watching the comments section. I love the side conversations that happen here in the comments section while we're doing the show and while people are watching stuff and following up. And it's it's very, very cool to see. I love the community that we have here for this show. I love all the regulars. I love it when we get other guys pop in that don't regularly hang out with us on a Friday or Saturday or Thursday or Friday night. Uh, so if you are here for the first time, if you are here and you're not a regular viewer of the program, chances are you are not subscribed to this here show. So if you're in the comment section and you're not subscribed, please do me a favor, subscribe to this thing. And then share. Give this give this show a share. Give the channel a share out there. Tell everybody that's a bearded villain or interested in bearded villains uh, that we need to we need to boost this thing up. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. Well, not by the end of the year. By the halfway point of the year is what I really like to be. Uh, but you know, I, I, I'm realistic. So end of the year. But I would love for it to happen, you know, in the next week. But uh we got I don't know what it is. We're somewhere between fifty and seventy-five to go, viewers to go. That's all we need, I think, is to get there. So let's let's do it. Let's help help me help the show or something. Anyway, <laughs> let's get there. Let's get there. Because like I said, I've said from day one, this is not my show. This show is as much yours as is mine. So uh, let's get there so we can do some really cool stuff. Because once you hit certain trajectory marks, then you can do other things. And that's what we want. So um, I just want to quickly revisit back before we take off. I just want to quickly revisit the topic that we mentioned last week. And I had some guys reach out to me with some different, um, with some thoughts and I just wanted to read a little bit about some of some of the messages that were sent to me. I'm not, I don't want to get into who sent me different messages, but there's there there seems to be um, no consistent rhyme or reason to why some guys travel or don't. And uh, some of the people that reached out to me are some of the ones that used to travel a lot and don't so much anymore. Some reached out to me. I heard from some people that. They, they, to my knowledge, they've never really been big travelers, but they still had an opinion on it. And that's interesting too, um, because they've heard or seen or talked to other people about things. So I just wanted to, to mention a couple of things. Um, one of our brothers said to, uh, said for him, uh, it's just finances that stop him from traveling. Um, he works weekends and that's a problem. And a lot of our guys do a lot of guys work weekends. You only get so many weekends off a month and, um, you know, you only, I don't, I mean, you, you, I mean, weekends off a month or weekends off a year, you only get so many. And so given that fact, and then you have family stuff you need to do, you can't take off four or five weekends. And I get that, but um, I'd love to see it. He says, um, like you, it's choosing meats that give the most value to me. And for whatever reason, it's mainly been our chapter, mini meats that are most satisfying. Uh, the brotherhood, Feed, uh, feeding needs uh, to be matured and grow organically through these mini meats. And I agree with that. He says he's been to a few big open meats 
and they're just awesome, but in a different way. Uh, that's very true. Very true. I wholeheartedly agree with all of that. Let's see, what else did we have? Uh, we had another brother that reached out and he said he believes finances play a big part in today's society because it is so hard to live comfortably in a world where even two incomes, you're still struggling. Exactly. So I believe it is definitely an issue with why things are happening, but also I feel that there are a lot of the newer guys, and we've talked, we've touched about on this as well when we were talking about leadership and we were talking about uh, everybody having a voice, right? Uh, this brother kind of alludes back to that. He says that a lot of the newer guys coming in, pitching ideas and their captains or their captain's council, and it's getting shut down right away and even being taken, not without even being taken into consideration. So he says, I'm sure it's also a reason as well as for, for the numbers to being down. So we got we to gotta start respecting everybody's ideas, regardless of how much time they have in this club. They have time on earth. They have time as grown men. No matter how old they are, you can't discount their ideas. You at least need to listen to them and see if, if they're good. I, I, am from the, I am from the theory that, and from the side of the world that says you need to listen to all ideas, and then you bring them before your chapter or you bring them before the officers, then the chapter. Because everybody that's in your chapter, people need to know that their opinions are at least being heard. You're not always, we always tell, we, you know, we tell the guys, you're not always going to hear a yes, uh, and we'll tell you why, but there's, we will bring important matters before the chapter. So I think that's very important for everybody to do. Uh, one of our other brothers reached out to me, and I'm just, like I said, I'm just reading a couple of these because se several of these had the sim a very similar overriding tone with it. Um, he said, uh, hey, bro, I was listening to your podcast last week, really hit a subject that I've been questioning with some of my boys in the chapter. I still argue uh, that COVID has reshaped and realigned brothers' priorities. And also it does uh, uh, does get to the mentality of it such, so it doesn't roll, uh, such doesn't roll with the event. Um, let's see if I can read this a little bit better here. <laughs> if such and such doesn't roll up to your event, why would you go to their event? And why would you go uh, support them if they're not supporting you is basically what he's saying. We've talked about that. You need to support those who support you. And like I said, it doesn't mean you need to roll in with your whole chapter. It just needs, you need to give them some support. If people take the time to go out of their way to come visit you, to come support you, if they go out of their way to provide you with, you know, some sort of raffle item, donated item, something, then you need to reciprocate that the best you can. So, yeah, I, I really appreciative of everybody's thoughts on this. Um, as time goes on, I would love to hear more from our brothers. If, if you're in a chapter and you know that there aren't a whole lot of guys that are traveling, if you know that the chapter used to travel a lot, or the, several of the guys used to travel a lot, I would love for you to dig deep into that and, and ask your chapter brothers. Put it out there in, in your chapter. Every chapter has a chat. Every And most chapters have an officer chat of some sort, uh, if they have an officer corps. I would love for these questions to be given to them. Hand those questions over and say, hey, I've noticed many of our guys, you, we, we used to have a lot of guys that traveled three or four times a year, and I've noticed that we don't anymore. You know, I, I, I would be curious to the answers of some of these questions. Is it financial? Is it that there's just a lack of interest in, you know, that there were a few few people that reached out and said, I'm just tired of going to beard competitions all the time? Well, as I said before, I think that there's some truth in that, but I also think that some of that falls back on us. And I listened back to my interview or to my to my to what I was saying last week when I was talking about how it's not the host chapter's responsibility to make me happy and make me feel like I'm getting something out of something. That's my responsibility. And I had somebody reach out to me and say, well, isn't it though, uh, don't you think that some of that falls on the hosting chapter, the one that's hosting it to make sure it's a successful event, to make sure that, it's, um, that, that it is something that you want to come back to? 
and I yes, in that regard, simplistically, yes, I agree that the host chapter always wants to host in a good way. The host chapter wants to represent themselves and the brotherhood in a positive light, and they want to make it a fun experience, you know, as best they can. But that in and of itself doesn't even guarantee. It could be the most, they could have the best thing out there. They could have the most organized, the most fun event planned. And you, if you're not willing to go out of your way to still have fun, to seek out the fun opportunities, to seek out those fun conversations, the meaningful moments, if you're not, if you're not willing to do that, no matter what the host chapter does, you're still not going to have a good time. And I think that's, that's kind of where I was coming from with it, is that it's still your responsibility. So a perfect example is this. As I said last week, the, the thing I, the, the, the least important, the least fun and enjoyable part of any one of these events that I go to, and I say this straight to people's faces, I say it to our chapter, and I say it in, in conversation, if anybody asks me to events that I go to, that the least fun and enjoyable part, technically speaking, for me at any one of these events is the beer competition. But it doesn't stop me from still going to the to these events because it's just a beard competition. When we say just, because it's still there, it's still going for charity. You're still raising money for that specific charity that they're doing, and it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't take anything away from you, and it kind of puts you in the mindset of I, you know you shouldn't care if you win, lose, or whatever else. But you're going to support the chapter and support whatever charity efforts they're doing. And then above and beyond that, it's up to you. Now, some te- some places have a spin on their on their contest, right? Here in Northern Indiana, we include a beard competition, or we we include a costume contest with it. As we're going to find out next weekend in Chattanooga, they're doing a, a dapper version where they're you know giving people the option to dress up, and there's a dapper category. How cool is that? That's different. That's unique. Something different. And uh, to see. Everybody's rendition, so everybody's version of how that's going to be, how that gonna, how that's going to play out, what dapper means to them. Are they going to dress up? Are they going to dress down? Are they going to do something fun or unique or find a cool way to, to dress up? And it's going to be a fun time, and it's a different take on what the same old, same old thing is. And so I give a lot of props, a lot of credit to the Chattanooga boys for, for this idea, trying something new, and I look forward to seeing it, being a part of it, and watching it grow. And watching this idea be something that's true and unique to them, to what they want to do and how their event can take off um, with something unique in it. And I love that part of it. And I think that's something that all of our chapters out there can do. You don't just have to have a, only a beard competition um, simply just to say it that way. Oh, we're going to do a beard competition. Okay, great. But if there's some way that you can make it yours, Make it uniquely for you and your chapter. That's the, that's the really fun part about it. And so I look forward to seeing chapters kind of push the, push the envelope, raise their game uh, in the coming months, in the coming years. And I look forward to seeing what everybody can do. But we can't, we've got to get out of that mindset of it's just this. And I've been there. If you've been to one, you've been, to, you hear that a lot too. You've been to one beard competition, you've been to them all. Well, that's not always the case either right? Because you're going to see different people at them. You're going to have different experiences. You're going to have different conversations. You're going to have, it's all going to be different. You might go to this one because that one specific charity that they're raising money for is near and dear to your heart. It, it means something. It's attached to something a little bit more meaningful to you than say the other ones are out there. And that's great. Maybe that's the thing that drives you to go to that one. Kudos. Love it. But I would love to see us going back to our chapters. Don't be afraid to ask those questions. Reach out to your officers. Reach out. If you're an officer, if you're a captain, if you're a co-captain or an officer otherwise, reach out to your chapter. Put that question out into your chapter. You have a chapter chat for communication. I, w- I would love for all of us out there to throw that question because I've done it in our chapter. I've done it in our chapter chat. You know I've done it here. I've reached out to others as well. I want, I, I'm curious what those answers are. Why don't more guys travel? Why don't you travel? You used to travel a lot. Why don't we anymore? And encourage, not discourage, 
We don't want to cut down guys that can't because it's financially impossible for them to. We don't want to cut down the guys that have to work to get to get it to to make ends meet. They have to work weekends. They have to work overtime. We're not about cutting people down for that. Family first all the time. But when you do have a free weekend and you do have the ability to, hey, by the way, I'm going down here this next weekend. You don't need to drive yourself. Hop in the car with me. We'll go down for the weekend. You know, if it's if it's just a day trip, hop in the car with me. You don't need to, you don't need gas money. You don't, we're going. Let's go and let's go have a good time. Especially reach out to your brothers that you know have either for whatever reason have never been to another chapter's events. And all they've ever known is your home chapter. What a cool experience you could offer and make sure that somebody else gets. How cool is that? I mean, if that's not brotherhood, I don't know. I don't know. Well, guys, I have rambled on and talked to you all till your uh, ears fall off and and my voice starts to go away a little bit, as I can already tell. So with that, <laughs> uh, puzzle. Puzzles after my own heart here. <laughs> Uh, making making all these fun comments here. If I can find my my little cursor, yep. He says, "Be the villain you always needed to be." Yep, one hundred percent. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I want to end it with uh, just a couple seconds here. Cheers again to all of you, and then I want to take just a couple seconds out to give the boys over at thebeardcalendar dot com a quick shout out. And uh, we don't do a calendar of events here anymore, you know, on the, po- on the podcast, because these guys have already perfected it. And so I just want to scroll through here and just mention off a few things that are here on the Beard Calendar. It's available for you to go out and see at thebeardcalendar.com. This thing covers everything that's out there under the sun, including Bearded Villain events, but not only Bearded Villain events. Why is that important? Because it gives you an opportunity to, in- to, to get out there and involve yourself and, you know, get acclimated with other beard clubs out there that are doing the same thing we're doing, working to try and make life's better place for other people and help out charity. So I just want to mention a few things here. Um, coming up this weekend, this weekend in, looks like, what, New York, Watertown, New York, annual Donegal King of Beards is going on. We also have this weekend in Corpus Christi, Texas, Beards on the Bay 24. We also have coming up the same weekend, <clears throat> there's an online competition, beard competition that you can get involved in. The National Online Beard Competition, National Beard Line, Beard Competition. Get out here to the beardcalendar.com and check these things out. These the, there are links here for everything you could possibly want to know and uh everything is here for you. <clears throat> on the 23rd we have Greensboro, North Carolina. Carolina BAM is going on. That same weekend, we just talked about it, Chattanooga, Tennessee, Chattanooga Villains Beard Competition. Uh, this is going to be their Villains Dapper Night Out. Can't wait to be there and see these guys and enjoy. Same weekend, <clears throat> can't make it to Chattanooga. If you're anywhere near Wichita, Kansas, they got an event there as well. So get out here. I'm also going to be planning to go to this one here in April, uh, on the 6th of April in Plymouth, Indiana. So it's like 40 minutes away from my house. Perfect. Hiram's Beard Club is hosting Clash of the Bewhiskered. That's a really cool event. We had some guys from our chapter go to that last year, met up with a a bunch of really cool people from other beard clubs. So uh, get over here, look at this thing, thebeardcalendar.com, and see if you can do some stuff with some other chapters uh, of other beard clubs out there. And just enjoy yourselves, have a great time with it. It'd be really cool to see. So with that, guys, I'm going to let that wrap us up, and um, I'm going to say it, man. That's going to wrap up episode 207. I want to challenge you guys, as I always do every week, to be the villain that the world needs you to be, because the heart of a villain never stops beating. Most important words I say every week, remember them well. It's okay not to be okay. If you are hurting, please find a brother to talk to. Remember, it's okay not to be okay. But as I say, that doesn't cut it right there. That's not enough. 
just recognizing it. You need to do the work. You need to talk to somebody. Take the time. Find somebody to talk to, please. Hey, guys, that's going to do it. I'm going to be back here again next week for episode 208. Otherwise, I'll be in Chattanooga next weekend. Look forward to seeing you all there. Until then, take care and stay safe. From the start to the finish, go hard.